Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am doing a take two of my clear up exfoliating facial bars. And I call them facial bars, but they're anywhere you have problem skin bars. And the reason why is because of some of the ingredients I'm putting in here. But before I get into why I chose the ingredients, I just want to make my disclaimer statement that this is a bar of soap we're making today. It'll lather up and it'll get you clean. So that's what I'm saying it'll do. Now let me tell you about the ingredients that I've chosen to go in this soap. And again, this is a take two. I made this soap uh, earlier. I'll, maybe I can link it up here or down below. I'll, I'll have a link for the first, uh, actually that was a remake too. What am I trying to say? The last time I made this soap, we have some essential oils going in here. This is an all natural soap and we have a couple of factors going into this soap that cause rapid acceleration at Trace. And um, it's a very panic situation. <laughs> I try to keep my cool, but it's total panic. My hands start shaking. The last time I was like, ah. But um, it went really fast. It wasn't quite soap on a stick, but really close. And uh, the bars ended up looking like granite. I had said that they were ugly. I thought they were, I'm like, oh no, because it didn't turn out how I had planned it to. And um, But I had a lot of people contact me and say, that soap isn't ugly. It just looks like stone or granite or something. So this is take two. We'll see if we can get a swirl. It's probably gonna go sideways on us again, and maybe we'll just do another granite or stone looking soap. <laughs> so the essential oils that I'm using uh, are, let me see, I have bullet notes written down and I don't have my reading glasses on. I'm using rosemary, tea tree, and oregano oil. The one that's a stinker is the oregano oil, but it's so good for your skin. And here's some of the properties in the oregano essential oil and why I'm willing to struggle with it for this. Uh, it's an anti-inflammatory, it's an antioxidant, and it's very wound healing. And there's other things too. You can look up oregano oil, but topically, it's just really good for problematic skin. Uh, tea tree oil is wound healing, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, and it's said to fight acne. And rosemary, antifungal, antibacterial, antiseptic, uh, and it's good, to, oh, what did I write here? It's good for problem skin rosemary oil is. So those are the essential oil combo. I think it smells really good. It's very medicinal smelling. But anyway, <laughs> it's that oregano oil. Oh my word, not for the faint of heart. If you're a new soaper, I would recommend that you stay away from oregano oil until you uh, get your sea legs. <laughs> All right, so some of the other cast of characters that go into this really nutrient dense soap is I use Fuller's Earth Clay uh, instead of kale and clay. And let me see if I have that written down here. What Fuller's Earth, it absorbs oils and impurities, it unclogs pores, and it's a gentle exfoliant. Um, I, we also have activated charcoal, which is fabulous. Um, activated charcoal, here it is, it helps oily skin. Uh, and, and it's said that charcoal can actually be a skin tightener and a skin firmer, um, it can like tighten your pores. I don't know, but activated charcoal is very good on problem skin. It is a toxin puller also. So that's going in there. Uh, I'm gonna be using apricot kernel meal to kind of bump up the exfoliating factor with the Fuller's Earth, just for a gentle, and I like this. It's a very fine um, grind on this, and uh, it just, it, it's a nice exfoliant without being too rough. You know, I don't wanna tear the skin up, but I, you know, a little exfoliation is very good. So that is another thing. Okay, turmeric. We got turmeric going in there with the activated charcoal. Not only is it gorgeous to look at with the black charcoal, it's really good for your skin. Uh, turmeric is, it's rich in antioxidants. Uh, it has all kinds of you know vitamins and minerals. It's anti-inflammatory, wound healing. It reduces scarring uh, and it can fight eczema and psoriasis. And this is all topically. I take turmeric internally every day. It's great stuff. But um, on your skin, it's good stuff. Oh, I will caution you, the charcoal and the turmeric stain when you're working. So wear your gloves, wear an apron. Um, that turmeric powder is pretty tough. If you get it wet and then get it on your clothes, you're gonna have a nice yellow stain. So <laughs> word to the wise on turmeric. Let me see, that is the cast of characters for the soap oil portion. I will be using jojoba oil as one of my oils because it's a really, um, it's a very dry oil and it's very good on problem skin. Jojoba oil is uh, 
what is it, non-comedogenic, or it doesn't clog pores. It's a good oil. So that will be a portion in this soap also. And for my liquid portion, here's the tricky part. I'll be doing a combination of aloe vera and witch hazel. And I just get this at Walmart, but witch hazel does have a little bit of alcohol in it. Um, and I will show you how I add my lye to my aloe vera witch hazel solution so that you don't volcano. It's just keep everything cold, add the lye slowly, I'll bring you along while I do it, but um, if you go very slowly and carefully, you can do it. And it makes a wonderful additive in this bar of soap. <laughs> so I'm gonna get my hair pulled back and get my prep work done. We'll give this, this is take two on my clear up bars. Um, we could have a panic situation, but you're coming along with me. So uh, let's get everything pulled together and make some soap today. Getting ready to mix my witch hazel and aloe vera solution here. I got my little cotton ball size of Tussa Silk. Just pop it in here. Here is my measured lye and I have it in the ice bath. And again, with the witch hazel, you just go real slow and it's fine. Um, every, keeping everything cold, the witch hazel was refrigerated and chilled. The aloe vera was in the refrigerator and chilled. So again, this is about one third witch hazel to two thirds aloe. <clears throat> And stand your face back because the fumes are not great. But if you just go slow and keep everything cold, you're really not at risk for a volcano. Even with the ice bath and everything chilled, it's hot enough now the silk is getting melted. And just keep stirring. And with lye, whether you're using water or goat milk or this, you know, aloe solution, whatever, um, you just want to be stirring it until you feel all the grit dissolved. You don't, because it can solidify in the bottom. So that's how you know your lye is is uh, dissolved. You just, you know, it's a feel. You don't want any grit in there. And then you can stop stirring and let it sit and cool off. But you just want to make sure it's completely dissolved before you stop stirring. Oh, we're getting this in here. So, you know, on this take two, we're going to kind of proceed the same, like with the aloe vera solution as I did in the first video for these wonderful clear up bars. But I am going to hold off my essential oils until after I've incorporated my activated charcoal and turmeric. Then we'll add the essential oils last. Um, although I did, I got such a positive response to my last bars that really did look like granite or marble, some sort of earth stone. It actually was um, Rob Ross. It was a happy mistake, <laughs> but I don't think I can duplicate it. So I'm going to try to just uh, not have a panic situation today. That's the goal, to not have it go too crazy and be able to work with it. I would like to get a nice swirl. I mean, if I could duplicate the marble thing, maybe that would work out, but we'll just go for a swirl today and see if that oregano oil will behave. It's a tough one. Some of those essential oils, some fragrance oils, they are stinkers to work with, but they're so worth it that you just are willing to sweat through. <laughs> so, all right, I'm just stirring till I feel all the granules dissolved in here, and then I'm gonna let it sit in the ice bath and cool off, even in here, it's very warm. It's time to add our additives. I've got my essential oil blend already here set off to the side and it's going to sit there until I'm ready for it. Um, so to the base oils here, which does have the jojoba oil in it, which I was reading jojoba oil isn't actually an oil. It's considered, um, it's got the more of the properties of a wax. It's a very dry oil. Anyway, I digress. Let's add these in. Here's my colloidal oats because that's great for your skin. And um, my Fuller's Earth Clay is going in here instead of kaolin clay. So we've got a nice heaping tablespoon. Oh my, I just scooped that everywhere. Let me clean that up. All right. Goodness sakes. Well, a little for the soap, a little for the tabletop. We're good. Get that out of the way and we'll finish up. So I did a heaping tablespoon and I spilled some, so let's do another tablespoon in there. And then I've got my apricot kernel meal, 
which is aiding to the the fuller's earth gives sorry gives a little um, bit of a gritty feel to the soap it's not as smooth as bentonite and then um, this will add some of the exfoliating factor too so I'll do a nice rounded tablespoon and uh, we'll get this blended in and kind of let it anchor and absorb in and then we'll get to moving on with our witch hazel aloe vera lye solution get that added in <laughs> it's go time so got all the additives that I want and everything in here got my aloe vera and witch hazel lye solution which has the tussa silk fibers and a little sodium lactate that's going on here I got my essential oils got my charcoal and turmeric off to the side and we're just going to proceed with caution and see um, let's see how this goes today take two <laughs> But you know what, I'm just, I was so blessed with the response from the last one, my marble look, it, it was okay. You know, that's the beauty of soap. It's, uh, it's fun and you never quite know. So, gonna hand stir in until I get emulsion and then we'll split off. I also think the Fuller's Earth Clay um, can aid in speeding up trace because it is so um, absorbent and toxin pulling. It's a really good clay for um, doing a deep cleansing mask and things. So I think that that's also a culprit. So there's so many factors in this with the witch hazel and the Fuller's Earth and the essential oils that just stack the deck against you. But <laughs> We proceed because it's so worth it. It's a really great bar of soap. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure off here. Now, here's the turmeric. Let's go in here with it. Nice tablespoon. Here's my gorgeous activated charcoal such a mess but it's so worth it there we go so put it off to the side and now I'm just going to give these just a quick pulse to blend not a lot grab a couple of whisks to get in the um, essential oils blended. So we're about even, so I'm going to try and kind of split this up evenly here. There we go. I'll just give it a quick whisk and we'll get it pouring. There. Oh, these essential oils smell so good. I mean, I like kind of a medicinal smell. Yep. Starting to turn. It's exciting. All right. Let's get these out and we'll get to pouring. Here we go. Let's see if we can. Oh, look at that. It's already going. Good heavens. It's crazy, huh? Okay. We'll do some black. Woo! Mercy, mercy. This is not for the faint of heart. I would not suggest this for a new soaper, but if you're adventurous, give it a whirl. All right, let's get in here. Yep, look at that. My word. We may get the marble effect anyway, but I'm going to try and kind of swirl this in here a little because I didn't do an in the pot swirl like I did last time. Oh mercy, here we go. A little black, I'm gonna have to tap this on the ground after I kind of mush it around here and um, see if I can get most of the air pockets out by tapping and we'll deal with them on the flip side if we need to. All right, 
So, got it all in the mold here. Let me see. I'm just gonna sort of choppy chop. I think we're gonna end up with another marble. Kind of doing it in the pot swirl here, in the mold swirl. Good heavens. This stuff, I tell you what. What in the world? All right, let me go ahead and get this slathered around and tap it down on the ground and I'll just roll with it and I got my salt out in case I needed to have another uh, rough top experience. Let me tap this. Now let me see if I can even do any sort of a... No, probably not. All right, we're gonna go for the salt on the top just like last time. It's all right. Let me get this cleaned up a little and then we'll go ahead and mash our salt in. Oh, mercy. I don't want to waste any though. So I'm not going to make the mistake of calling this ugly because I got corrected last time. It's a happy mistake, I guess. And uh, <laughs> last time I said it was like putting lipstick on a pig when I put the salt on because that's kind of what it felt like. So, all right, let's get the salt out. Sides cleaned up here. Yeah, I want to get it well, I can still mash it in there so it'll stick. So here we go. Lipstick on a pig. But you know what? Rock salt and it ends up looking like a rock on the inside. It's kind of cool. All right, we're just going to call it, call it cool. And I'm going to mash it because I want the salt to stick. Let's see, do I have any blank spots? There we go. All right, y'all, even when I held the essential oils back, it just went. So, oregano oil, Whew. it's a challenge. So good for you though, it's worth it. I keep torturing myself, but you know what? It's worth it in the end. Let's get this sprayed off with the rubbing alcohol here. And, uh, <laughs> Well, looks like a repeat of the last time, doesn't it? Oh, mercy. Let's see what this looks like on the inside tomorrow. Alrighty. It's been 24 hours on take two, which sort of came out like take one. But uh, yeah, let's get in here and see how this one turns out. See if we have that same marble effect that I did last time. Boy, I tell you what. I thought with my prep work, I might have had a different uh, result going in the mold, but I was incorrect. So I'm very anxious to see how um, it came out in the middle with all that mashing around I did. And yep, I am gonna have some air pockets, but that's all right, we'll fill those in and I'll show you how I do that again. So, wow. Looks like we're gonna have some more granite soap. Marble, granite, what do you think? Marble or granite? I clear up I call it facial bar but it's really anywhere you have problem skin bar and look at the sides so this uh, accelerates trace so fast because of a couple factors it has oregano oil in it um, as well as rosemary and tea tree it also has fuller's earth clay which are known to accelerate and the liquid portions aloe vera and witch hazel and all of those things are like a double whammy for accelerating trace so I end up usually having to plop it into the mold and it comes out looking kind of like granite with air pockets, which I will fill in later um, with scraps. But yeah, it comes out pretty rustic. And um, I had felt like it was ugly, but a lot of people got back to me and said, no, it's not ugly. It just looks like stone and I'll roll with it. So I'm trying to be gracious about it but it does kind of look like somebody's marble countertops doesn't it or granite let's 
get in here and see. It's just no two bars are alike. And it was pretty thick going into the mold. All right, I cut off my little end sample piece. Let's get into the middle of the loaf here and see how this marbly there and I got air pocket that I'll show you how I repair those again but um, yeah not really the swirls that I was hoping for but uh, let's just keep going here I just sliced these and normally I wait a few hours then come back in and bevel and uh, stamp but because I have so many with holes that need to be repaired um, I want to do this well it's still very pliable so I'm gonna go ahead and bevel these now I will still wait a few hours to come in and stamp but I'm going to come through and bevel and repair the holes right now so this one doesn't have any holes it just looks like a nice little piece of granite which is groovy. So that one's good. But now I've got these shavings. Let's take this one. So um, you see that? Just the air pockets. The um, batter was so thick uh, pouring <laughs> into these molds. It was quite ridiculous. So let me see. You take, take the shavings and I make like a little soap dough with them. And then I just fill in the holes with it. And it's really rather convenient and then your bar doesn't have a hole now you could these are so rustic that you probably could go ahead and just leave the holes but for me personally I don't I don't like that I want the holes filled in but there look at that you can't even see it no hole now this has a little abrasion on the front so I'll go ahead and fill that in too as long as I'm doing it I might as well just get them all so it's a little time consuming, but I think it's worth the effort for the finished bar. After the cure, um, I'm always really glad that I took the time to do this on bars that have air pockets. And there you go, no hole on either side. So to me, it's just better that way. So now I forgot to bevel this one. I'm gonna bevel it and we'll move on to my next one with air pockets. Go. Oh, this has some on the side here. Let me get those two. And I try to, like it has a lot of uh, the turmeric yellow on the side, so I try to pick out shavings with the colors that will sort of complement what's going on there. There we go. And no holes on the sides. So one bar down. Got a lot to go. <laughs> this is a very holy batch. <laughs> 